today is because I am a very curious person. It's always about learning. So I visited the place, and as I was walking, I saw this beautiful mountain, snow-capped mountain. Do you know which mountain it is? It was the Everest. Well, they told me it was the Everest. Okay? <laughs> they told me it was the Everest. Obviously, um, it was the summertime, but there was snow up there. And later, I found out it was actually what they call the Mount Everest. You call it the roller coaster, right? It's a roller coaster ride, and it's called the Expedition Everest. All right? Expedition Everest. Anyone been to the Everest from here? Thinking about it? So that was my first, actually, upfront opportunity with Expedition, with the Expedition Everest. Now, how many of you love roller coasters? Been, been on a roller coaster? Wow, okay, I see some of you. Wow, okay, can I see a show of hands again? Who are you? Who are you? Wow, more hands coming up. Wow, okay, fantastic. You know, and the rest of you? Never. Thanks, Sue, for participating too. Never, right? So that, I, I was like Sue, you know. Um, so I had a couple of friends. Um, they came out and they said, Hey, John, you know what? It was an amazing experience. And they said, Okay, sure, but I, I'm not so much of a roller coaster fan, you know. It, it just frightens me. Now, because of uh, sometimes peer pressure, right? Have you heard of uh, the peer pressure? It's like, hey, John, you know, if she can do it and he can do it, you should do it. <laughs> Heard that before? So I said, okay, um, yeah, let's, let's do it, right? Let's do it. And be, before long, uh, I buckle up and I say, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. We are now buckled up and we are ready for Expedition Everest. And once you're buckled up, that's it. You can't escape. <laughs> you're locked in, Right? So we went sailing up, 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 and it was still okay for that moment. It was quite nice, it was going up, and then it went a couple of round bends. I thought, okay, it wasn't that bad, until I came to this. <laughs> Can you see what's that? <laughs> right? There was no way forward. So when that happened, it was like, OMG moment. It was an OMG moment, and it was like, little did I realize that was the time the ride actually happens. So without a note, I was pulled back into the darkness, and it was up and down. I tell you, it was the longest day of my life. <laughs> I thought I would have died there, you know. It's like, oh no, it's like crazy up, down, and then the speed of it going down, up and down. And later I found out it was one of the most challenging ones. Yeah, good. They should have told me that earlier, right? And do you know that it's very interesting that for those of you that have gone through roller coaster, when they were coming down, at that point, the cameras would be there. It's like when you're coming down, the most frightened moment is like, ah! And they say, here's your coupon to collect your pictures. Thank you so much, you know, thank you so much, right? But I realized something as I was there, I had these emotions, right? Uh, as I was there, I, I felt a lot of uncertainty. Um, they, they were fear in me. And I was like, am I, am I ever going to get out of this ride? Any one of you felt that in your role as a Husha leader? Sometimes, you know, in work, it's like a roller coaster, isn't it? You know, you go through some great times, but then there are some times that is really challenging. But then the good times come, and then it's like going down, and then you're launched into the darkness, and you're like wondering, what could I have done differently? Right? So all these are the emotions that I felt when I was on the particular ride. So looking at that, this came up to me. Anyone familiar with this term called VUCA? What does WUKA mean? Volatile. What does you mean? Uncertainty, right? What about C? Complexity. And what about A? Ambiguity, right? So the WUKA world 
reminded me so much of the roller coaster ride. Anyone still experience this a little bit? These kind of emotions? No one experienced that? Ah, okay. Now, the other thing that I've known as I speak in Asia, like in Malaysia, I'm from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, people sometimes are a little bit shy to put up their hands. And I told them, this is what you can do. Just blink your eyes twice. <laughs> I see you. I see you, all right? So just blink your eyes twice and I've got you. Otherwise, right, let's participate. Let's have fun in learning. So the Wuka world. So what are we doing in the Wuka world? And in the word Chinese, right? In this Chinese word, if you know Chinese language, there is this word that says, in every crisis, right? This, this particular word. So it says, although there are danger in a crisis, but every crisis provides an opportunity. Provides a what? Opportunity. Provides a what? Opportunity, opportunity right? It really depends on how you see it. So for the time that we have today, I would like to share with you this acronym that is called GRIT. That is called? GRIT. G-R-I-T. GRIT. Right? So let's begin to explore what GRIT can do for you as a leader, even as you're leading the different landscapes that you're going through, and what I have personally learned from the word GRIT. So the first one is about a growth mindset. Right? It's about a growth mindset. So who knows what is a growth mindset? What do you think is a growth mindset? Always? Yeah, always thinking. Okay, what else? What comes to you when you say it's a growth mindset? Open-minded. Whoa, oh, I love that. Open-mindedness. What else? Learning always, right? So how many of you here feel that you have a growth mindset? Wow. I love it. Well, we should actually take a picture of this, huh? Make sure we, your hands are raised up and you have a growth mindset. Yeah, because as humans, we sometimes fall into the picture of having a growth mindset, maybe sometimes a fixed mindset. We're very sad in the ways we do certain things. But as long as you're learning, opportunity is there. Right? And, and here, the growth mindset is really inspired by this person, Carol Dweck, a Stanford professor, and she wrote the book called Mindset, right? How the psychology of success can impact. And what I'd like to do is use the acronym GRIT, G-R-I-T, infuse it from a growth mindset. Because as a person with a growth mindset, there are five elements, right? There are five elements that support you as an individual. Your ability to embrace challenge. You know, when you see a challenge, you welcome it. Don't become like me. When I saw the roller coaster, I wanted to run away. I was fearful. But because of peer pressure, I did it. Wasn't the most fun, but I did it, right? How will you continue to persist despite obstacles? So take a look at these five elements and ask yourself, are you successful in all? Let me blow this up even a little bit, right? As you look at the five elements, begin to ask yourself, which are the ones that I'm doing pretty successful? Which are the ones that I would like to be more successful? Right? Is it going to be efforts? Do I continuously learn? Do I learn from feedback? Yesterday we heard a lot about feedback in the discussion, how that is important, the two-way feedback. Steve spoke about that. Davis put some analytics metrics to even support the feedback. How in town halls, you know, should you get the CEO involved or not? So feedback is crucial. And are you inspired by other people's success? So let's dive into it, right? So what I'd like you to do right now is, I'd like you to rate yourself. Out of that five element, individually, put a score for yourself. One to 10, 10 is like superpower, very high. Where would you rate yourself on those five elements? Right? If you need to take a picture, grab a picture, but then ask yourself, which number would you put for each one of them? Right? Embrace challenges, persist despite obstacles. Where would you see it? Okay? So I'm just going to give you a minute to reflect on that. All good? All done? 
Sometimes it's tough, right, to give yourself a score. It's like, hey, I want to give myself 10. You can. If you had a 10 there, how can you be the 12? Are we good? All right. Okay, so keep that number because we're going to use that number later on. All right, later on. So let's start with the first one. Embrace challenges, right? Embrace challenges. Now, the World Economical Forum, they have their annual meeting in Davos in Switzerland every year. And last year, they came up with some of the skill set that is crucial for the future of work. Now, Steve spoke a little bit about the future of work. So what kind of skills do you think are important for yourself, for your team, for your leaders? So anyone want to shout it out? What kind of skills do you think is important? Communication. Communication. What else? Agility. Pardon? Uh, agility. 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 Yeah, absolutely. Anyone else? Adaptability. These are all your skill set, by the way. Eh? So you're part of it. What else do you think? Well, this is more, this is happening, this side. This side, maybe the breakfast is too much. <laughs> okay, it's like sinking in, right? So, so again, you're, you're a little bit of a competition there, right? A anyone from here? Learning communication. Yes, yeah, someone say communication. Sorry? Learning skills. Learning skills, all right. So let me share with you some of the insights, the core skills for a worker in 2023 and 2024, right? So analytical thinking, all right, came on number one, creative thinking, resilient, flexibility, agility. So that was number three, all right? So every year for the next three to five years, they will do a projection. They will do a projection on what are the skill set. So ask yourself, my dear friends, do you have this skill set? Does your team have the skill set to be successful as you're leading as you're managing, as you're retaining the talents that you have. So not only in Nepal, as you're retaining talents, but there are also other countries who are looking for similar talents. So ask yourself where you are in this. And if you look at this, what do you notice about the top 10? Actually, if you go to the website, they have at least 40 skills, but I'm just going to zoom in on the top 10. What do you notice about the top 10 skills that are here? Anything jumps out to you? Anything interesting? Is there a lot of AI stuff there? Some technology? But do you realize there are a lot of people-related skills? Right? If, if you look at it, there are at least six of them that are people-related. Right? Resilience. Motivation, curiosity, dependability, empathy, leadership, and social learning. So it wasn't surprising, right? It wasn't surprising that yesterday, um, during the day, emotional intelligence was mentioned a lot. And, and this is becoming one of the crucial elements. As you go through a roller coaster situation in your life at work, your ability to embrace emotional intelligence is going to make a difference for you. How many of you believe that is so? Right? Your ability to understand yourself and to embrace it. So, the Harvard Business Review have said this in the year 2014 already, right? So, that's almost 10 years ago. It is saying it is a tool that if you do it, use it with finesse, it is going to help you professionally. And what I've realized is, having done thousands of sessions on EQ, I have found that not only is, is it helping people personally, but it's helping them, sorry, not professionally, not only professionally, but it's also helping them personally. You know, many people have come back to me and said, hey, you know, John, having learned about EQ, I now better have better relationship with my family. I have better relationship with my children. Is that important? It is, right? So they begin to embrace that even much more, even much more. So if you're curious and if EQ is new to you, this is the definition by six seconds, right? So emotional intelligence, it's not complicated. It's really about your ability to blend your thinking and feelings. Blend your what? Thinking, right? Your head and your 
heart, right? The thinking and the feelings to make wise decision. And even in the different panel session that you heard yesterday between CEOs and the HR, a CEO's role is really important on their ability to blend their head and also the heart. We heard a lot about compassionate leadership these days, how people, mental wellness. After my session later on, there's going to be a session about mental wellness. A lot of experts is going to be sharing the insights of what is important. So your ability to embrace that is really important. So let me share with you uh, a model um, that I use that is by Six Seconds International. Right? In the Six Seconds International, there are eight competencies, but we won't go through all eight, but I'd like to share with you, it's called the KCG model. Know yourself, choose yourself, and give yourself. Right? KCG model. So within the KCG model, there are two competencies. Within choose yourself, there are four, and within give yourself, there are two. So for the time that we have today, let's focus on Two, two of them, right? So let's start with recognize patterns. So when I talk about patterns, what do you understand about patterns? What, what are patterns? Introvert, extrovert. Okay, so those are more personality, right? So but patterns, what, what are patterns? Trends, yeah, trends, maybe like habits. Habits, certain way of doing things, right? Certain way of doing things. So, Okay, so let's uh, explore this thing called patterns. Now, uh, do you ever get traffic jam in Kathmandu? Because from where I come from in Kuala Lumpur, by the way, anyone been to Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur? Wow, okay, please look me up. You've got a new friend now, right, in KL. Please buzz me, yeah? So, in Kuala Lumpur, we have a lot of cars. We have traffic jam. So, it's also the same in Kathmandu? Okay, very good. So we're not too different, huh? It's quite similar. Very good. Now, have you ever gotten stuck in a traffic jam before? Anyone? Always? <laughs> but thank, thank you for coming early today, huh? <laughs> if not, if I speak and suddenly it's like no one is here, major traffic jam. All right. So imagine this. Um, normally, to get to a destination, it only takes you like 15, 20 minutes, right? On this particular day, for whatever reason, unknown to you, a lot of cars, massive. Cars are not moving. Cars are not moving. But because you are in HR, you're all human, you're very compliant, right? So you will kind of like queue up, wait for your turn, right? And while you're doing that, can I ask, is WhatsApp used also here? Do you use WhatsApp? So someone sends you a message. Hey, where are you? We're still waiting for you. Are you arriving soon? And because you looked at the message, the car moves forward, there is a space. So what happens if there's a space in front of you? Somebody will cut into your lane, isn't it? Okay, now how, how do you feel when people cut into your lane? How, how do you feel? Annoying? Okay, annoying. What else? Angry, thank you so much. Okay, angry, what else? Road rage. Whoa. Uh, can, can I have your car number, my friend? <laughs> just, 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 yeah, okay. Thank, thank you for sharing. What else? What else would you experience? What else do you feel? Pardon? Smart driver. Smart driver, you feel that you're a smart driver. Okay, but you're not moving, you know. Oh, maybe he's, the, maybe the gentleman is the one. Okay, I'm just going to stop here, please. Come on in. Come on in, I'll block the traffic for you. There you go, there you go. All right. But different kinds of emotions, right? You feel different kinds of emotions. No. So that is what you feel. What would you do in that situation? What would you usually do when you're angry, you're frustrated, you're feeling uneasy? What would you do? Your horn. Okay, very good. I, I need to come nearer to my friend here. Okay, all right. Um, so you are horn, right? Okay, uh, can I know, can you demonstrate how your horn sounds like? <laughs> oh, sorry, wrong person. Okay. Yeah, how does your horn sound like? Excuse me, like... <laughs> you mean your horn can talk? I never knew cars in the power of, you know, special, high technology, excuse me. 
We don't have that in Malaysia. <laughs> All right, okay. So, so, yeah, so demonstrate how does your horn sound like? That did. That did. Okay, all right. Anyone has got a different horn? Anyone got a different sound? Oh. Brother, just now you say you let people pass, but now you horn horn. Ah, okay, no problem. Okay, any other horn? Wow, long, long version, huh? Wow, extended version. Um, I went out yesterday, I had a couple of those. Uh, very, very good drivers, right? So, so, yeah, it was very interesting because the other day I asked some people, when you're in the traffic jam, how do you feel and how does your horn sound like? And I got a very similar one. I said, how? At the moment when you're angry, upset, how does your horn sound like? Yeah. It's just, bon. Yeah, it's, it's not like that, right? So a little bit more on the extended version, right? So besides the horn, what else would you do? You, oh, you scream. Okay, you scream, all right. So you scream. Um, those, those are what I call the vocal exercise, right? Vocal exercise. What else, what else would you do? I've got a horn, I've got a scream. What else would you do? Anything else? Scold, Sc- scold so screaming. Uh, sometimes in other countries, I see people do the finger exercise. Uh, I won't show you which finger, right? But it's, it's one of the finger, right? I'm sure you all, you all know finger exercise. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't think it's this sarangye, you know? <laughs> very different, very different, right? So different emotions, right? So they feel and then they act. So, now do you think all these things happen automatically or they think about it? Automatically, right? I mean, when someone makes you angry, do you like, hey, Somebody just cut my leg. <laughs> now, usually I'll be angry. Hey, I'm angry now, man. Now, what do I do when I'm angry? Oh, I usually horn. Doesn't happen like that, right? I mean, it just happens automatically. And those are what you call your patterns. The things that happen without you even thinking about it. It just jumps out. Anyone experienced that before? Maybe someone said something, maybe something that you didn't do or other people didn't do that you wanted and you felt a sense of emotions. So the first part is really how well do you recognize your own patterns? Because if you want to grow, if you want to be successful, you need to start with yourself first. If you want to lead your teams, is it important to lead yourself first? If you want to lead your family, Is it important to lead yourself? So always start with yourself, right? Understand what patterns you have. So the second one that I want to focus is this thing called navigate emotions. It's called what? Navigate Navigate emotions. So what do you think is navigate emotions? The word navigate, what do you think is navigate? Driver, right? How, How do you maneuver, right? How do you navigate? So... Remember the story just now? He was stuck in a jam, he got through, got a little bit of an incident with another person, finger exercise, a little bit of the horn. So finally, he reached the destination. And the person who sent the message, remember? Where are you, brother, sister? Okay. He opened the door, they were so happy to welcome, hey, so good to see you. He got off the car, what's so good? I was stuck in a jam, you know, it was like 45 minutes, it's unbelievable, and you know, someone, go and show me a love sign some more, you know, cut my leg, (laughs) unacceptable to me. Has that happened to you before? You know, suddenly all those emotions just erupted. And the person was so happy, like waving, oh, cool, relax, just asking a question. So what I've noticed is, especially in Asia, uh, all of us sometimes keep a lot of things in our heart. Even though we're not happy, we keep it in our heart. Not sure about you. Have you experienced when in the office, when you go for meetings, huh? how's the meeting? Fantastic! Coffee break time. Oh, yeah, how can? How can they do this? Our target is so strange. No, no way. Go back into the meeting. How? Good break? 
excellent, can do, can, but inside cannot. <laughs> because we like to keep. We like to keep. And sometimes, even though we have now one terabyte or 10 gigabytes or whatever bytes, right? Is there a limit? Sometimes when the limit and if there's a wrong trigger, the whole thing will explode. Can you relate to that? It could be at work, it could be at home, right? So your ability to navigate is the key here. Once you recognize the pattern, ask yourself, how can you navigate? Um, is Waze popular here? Google Map? Right? You use Google Maps sometimes when you drive? Okay. How does Google Maps help you? you? You navigate, right? So let's say if you want to go to a destination and you see that Google Maps says it's red color. Right? Red color means what? Very jam, right? So what do you do when it's red color? Do you like, how many of you actually, oh, red color? Fantastic. Let me just drive straight into it. Whew, I can now enjoy, listen to some music. Ah, this is life. <laughs> How many of you do that? No, Not really, right? I wouldn't do that. What would you do? You'll find an alternate route, if it's possible, right? Another alternate option to get you quicker to your destination. So, as you look at your own emotional intelligence, ask yourself, what are some patterns that are showing up in my life? In your life, what are some patterns that I need to navigate? Right? Because the person that erupted just now, after he erupted, he kind of like felt bad. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I mean, it's not their fault. I mean, it's nothing to do with them. It was the situation. But my emotions, I just couldn't contain it. Right? So ask yourself, how can you best manage? Is this useful? Right? So I'd like you to reflect also for yourself, right? Because this is something that I'd like you to practice, to do and apply for your life, and even for your team. Because the more you're able to recognize your own patterns, your ability to navigate emotion is going to be greater. It's going to help you. During my next visit to Nepal, maybe, maybe the horn will be different. Maybe you have a different script. Thank you for making way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. So are you learning? Is this useful? Yes. All right. Turn to your partner and ask them, are you learning some new things? Turn to them and ask them right now, are you learning some new insights? Fantastic. So, for the first question is this. So how can you embrace challenges? Right? I would like to give you two minutes. Turn to the person on your left. All right, just find a partner, talk to them. Just share with them if there's a challenge in your life right now, in HR, at work, how can you embrace challenge, right? Because I saw many hands, growth mindset. So let's begin applying, share some ideas with your partner. Quick two minutes, go ahead, let's go. So if you don't have a partner, do it at three, three person, that's fine too, but let's have two if you can. So share with your partner. So what are some challenges that you see coming out very often? How can you apply? What patterns do you need to recognize? And how can you navigate them? Alright, so one more minute, one more minute, very quickly, very quickly. Continue the conversation, right? This is a starting point. Ask yourself, how can you embrace those challenges? Are we good? Yes. Are you ready for the next point? If you are, say yes. yes. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, fantastic. And please say thank you to your partner, right? It's all about appreciation. So please say a big thank you if you had a chance to share with them. Okay, let's go. So that's the first one. Right? The first one is on the growth mindset. Now, let's go into R. So R is about resilience. Right? So R is about resilience. 
And within resilience, I'd like to infuse the growth mindset number two and three into it. Two and three into it. So a growth mindset. How can you persist despite obstacle? So the first one off is about embracing challenges. The second one is how can you continue despite obstacles? Anyone have got obstacles in their life? At work? Yeah, we heard quite a bit yesterday, right? <laughs> Some challenges, right? So how can you still persist? Now with that, I'd like to share a video with you, right? How many of you know Steph Curry? Oh, we've got some NBA Golden State Warrior fans. By the way, uh, they, they beat Charlotte Hornets this morning for you, uh, some of you who are interested. Now, Stephen Curry, he came out with a documentary that is called Underrated. Now, he, as an NBA player, he's not one of the tallest players. He's only about 5'6", considered pretty short in NBA standard. Uh, but he managed to persists over the years and become very successful in whatever he does. So I'd like you to listen to the documentary and capture what are some of the insights you can find from the life of Steph Curry. So let's go. All right, Steph, ready? Stephen Curry, do not rely on him to run your team. He was about five, six. <laughs> Looks like a little kid. 150 pounds soaking wet. That was when I first really understood. I'm different. Stephen Curry, underrated, only on Apple TV+. So, what did you learn from the quick video about Steph Curry? Sorry? Be, yeah, be here to play. What else? Ne never give up. What else? Be believing in yourself, right? So sometimes, um, because I've done work in many different countries, so as an Asian, sometimes I, I have the imposter syndrome that maybe I'm not good enough. Anyone like me? Right? We, we feel that we're not good enough. You know, we have a lot of questions. So he had that because at five six, he wasn't one of the tallest players, not the most well-built, but he began to strengthen himself. He built muscles. He built things that will make him different. And you know what? Steph Curry, over the last 10 years, over the last decade, they are four times NBA world champion, All right? Together with his team. And not only that, he is the number one three-pointers as of now, right? The number two is only 2,000 973 shots. But as of March, he's already done 3,500 and he's still actively playing. But sometimes people see the record, but they don't see the work behind, right? Like many of you, behind you do a lot of work and sometimes you don't feel so appreciated. It may not be there, but then you still continue to persist because the rewards will be there when you least expect it. And now he continues to create history after history every day as he continues to play. So sometimes we have this self-limiting belief that stops us from becoming even better. So let me share with you this particular person. Anyone have read this book before, The Chicken Soup for the Soul? Okay, some of you have. So Jack Canfield. So Jack Canfield also wrote about the success principle. Uh, I had the privilege to meet Jack uh, in Canada, in US, a couple of years ago. And in his book, The Success Principle, he wrote about this thing called take 100% responsibility. Right? And he came up with a formula that is called E plus R equals to O. What is the formula called? Right, E plus R equals to O. Anyone know what is E plus R equals to O? No? Okay, so let, let me share a story with you. How many of you do travel sometimes? You travel, right? Okay, so a lot of travelers. So like me, I also travel a lot. Now, and you know by now that I love the game of basketball. 
right? So I enjoy basketball. Um, and there was this time, anyone knows Chicago Bulls? Yeah, you know? Who's the famous player in Chicago Bulls? My, Michael Jordan. Anyone knows Michael Jordan? Absolutely, right? So there was this particular year, I was supposed to have a meeting in New Orleans. So I booked a ticket. I checked the schedule. They have a game. My meeting was in April. So in August, I knew about the meeting. So I was very excited. I checked on the schedule. Is there going to be a game during my time in Chicago? And yes, there was. So I kind of like booked my ticket, booked the things. Uh, I was going to go, um, and I'm supposed to arrive in Chicago at 12 noon. The game is at 7 o'clock, plenty of time, 7 hours, all good, right? So after waiting, April finally came. So I took my flight. It's supposed to go from Kuala Lumpur to Paris, Paris to Chicago. Quite straightforward, right? So first flight, no problem, started early. But when I reached Paris, guess what happened? So we're supposed to have a two-hour transit time. So I was at the lounge. They made the announcement, flight delay. And because I do EQ, I was managing my emotions, right? So I was still on Facebook, on my social media, optimizing time, navigating emotions being productive, right? So all was good until I started seeing all my other passengers slowly moving to other flights. And then I was like curious, oh, so, so what, what happened to that flight? And then I found out that because one of the toilet was not working, they had to change everyone to a different flight because of some security elements. So, okay, right? So uh, then the time was getting shorter. And what happened was I was moved from Paris to Heathrow, London, Heathrow to Chicago. So guess what time I eventually arrived in Chicago? Make a guess. Oh, after the game? That's going to be so sad. <laughs> yeah, so remember, what time was I supposed to arrive? 12, right? 12. I arrived at 6 o'clock. And my heart was like, oh man. And it takes me one hour to go from... Uh, my hotel to the arena, and another 40 minutes from the airport to my hotel. So I said, well, no, no choice, right? Just, just got to see, hopefully there's no traffic jam, uh, like in Malaysia, like in Nepal, right? No traffic jam, everything will be good. Um, and then I had to pick up my luggage. So as I was waiting for my luggage, guess what? The luggage did not arrive. Can you believe it? You know, I'm trying to rush here, and the luggage decided to take a holiday. I don't know where. <laughs> right? It didn't arrive, right? Uh, so which means that I have to now queue up at the lane to make a report. Right? And the queue was also very long. So um, long story short, by the time everything finished, it was almost 8.35. So what would you have done if you were in my shoe? You look forward to something, you plan it so well in advance, you got everything ready, and now I can only leave the airport only with a backpack. I had two bags. Now, for those who are familiar with Chicago, it's quite cold in April, right? It's still quite chilly, and I didn't have a lot of those things ready with me because I was a little bit lazy to carry, so I kind of like put it all in my bag, and two bags was missing. Didn't arrive. So what would you do if you're in my shoe, would you just go straight to a hotel and just be done with it, enjoy the night scene of Chicago, or still go for a game? But by the time, remember, it takes an hour, right? By the time I reach there, it's probably going to be 9, 9.40. Would you still go for the game? How many will still go for the game? Okay, how many will go to the airport? I mean, go to the hotel. How many will stay in the airport? <laughs> okay, okay, so no one. Okay, that's, that's a good thing, right? Yeah, so I thought, yeah, I've, I don't have any bags to bring to the uh, hotel, so let me just go straight to the arena. So I reached the arena, uh, showed the person my ticket, and said, what, what day is this for? Well, it is, wow, it's almost finishing the game, only about 10 minutes left. Yeah, no problem, just go in, right? So I went into the stadium, but guess what? Guess who I met? Well, I have a flight that likes me. <laughs> so guess who I met? 
How do you know? Huh? <laughs> Were you there? <laughs> you, you're absolutely correct. I met Michael Jordan. I think that flight tells me that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Michael Jordan was there. Well, the statue. I, I, I mean, I, I didn't see him in person, but I met a statue of Michael Jordan. Well, if I've gone to the hotel, I wouldn't have met him, right? So, so the formula is this, right? So sometimes the events that happens in your life, you can have the best plan. What do you think is R? You are absolutely correct. Response, right? Because you can either react or you can either respond. That will determine your outcome. And because I responded by saying, let me just go to the stadium, see what comes out, I got to see Michael Jordan. <laughs> yeah, so check that out if you're ever in United Square, right? And, and I took a picture of him. You actually have to queue up to take a picture with Michael Jordan. It was really a long line, you know? Um, so I got to see a little bit of the game, you know, went to the arena. There was only about 10 minutes left, but I got to do it. And that's something that I learned about this formula E plus R equals to O. Because sometimes in life, right, sometimes in life, you can have the best things planned. Agree? Does things sometimes happen beyond your control? It does. But you have a choice on how you decide. The way you respond determines your outcome. If you are going to be positive, if you are going to be thinking of opportunity, having a growth mindset, that's what you will receive. That's the outcome you will achieve. Agree? So again, as you begin to look into this area called persistency, ask, what is your E plus R equals to O? Right? What is your E plus R equals to O? Are there areas in your life that you have to respond differently, right? Response differently. So, with that, let me go into the growth mindset number three. Let me go into the growth mindset number three. Let's take a look at the efforts to mastery, right? Efforts to mastery. And with this, I'd like to introduce a friend of mine called Ravi from Mumbai. Anyone have been to Mumbai? Okay, some of you have been to Mumbai. Now, as I play this video, I would like you to observe and tell me what you notice about Ravi. Okay, what do you notice about Ravi? Okay, so let's play the video. Oh, Italian, German, Arabic, can you, Russia. Can you show me? Which you, language? Uh, French. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. After Italian. Italian. After German, After Arbi. After Russian, Paulin Maulin, Pisha Trubi, Ada Ruski Raska Punargi, the Pish Pisha Trubi, Ada Tiris Pisha, Ada Kurusha Pisha Trubi. After Japanese, Kujaku no, Mini Mini Matakai, Koriwano Gojurpini, Koriwano Gojurpini, Koriwano Haku Gojuni, Sayonarani. How did you learn all this stuff? I are selling every tourist coming because yeah. every every tourist coming the here, every every country people coming because I are selling every little little every language. Hmm. Five six talking language, every every language because I selling. What about Arabic? Arbi, Baba Taus in Arbi people here so many coming, so yeah. many ranches and coming Arbi, Hirani. Can you speak Arabic? Arabic, yeah. Lala Taus Kardi Chan Baba. Comes in other Pilat Mia comes in other comes in. Other Mia comes in. Other Chan Baba Taus. 
<laughs> That's really good. Doctor Wendy, this yeah. is hanging garden. You know yeah. why I call this hanging garden? No, right. Inside in the water tank, the garden, 30 million gallons. All right. So what do you notice about Ravi? Confidence. Okay, what else? He knows many languages, huh? Yeah. Quite, quite, quite fascinating, isn't it? Right? Uh, so when I, when I saw the video, I was really intrigued. He definitely knows more languages than me. Right? Um, so there was a chance, there was a year that I went to uh, Mumbai. I was speaking in the World HRD Congress. And during that time, in conjunction with that, I remember this video. And I said, hey, you know, he spoke about the hanging garden, you know, where there was a water tank. So after the conference finished, a couple of us went to the hanging garden just to take a look around. And I was walking. When we reached there, I noticed there was a group of people gathering together. So I walked a little bit closer. And as I walked a little bit closer, I began to hear different languages, different countries' languages. And I was really curious. Wow, who could this person be? So I'm going to show you a second video. And I'd like you to take note what is different about the second video, especially what new languages were spoken, what additional one. Okay, so let's take a look. Bonjour, c'est Ashish Lee. Cela fait dix points à 150. Cela deux dollars à quoi merci beaucoup. In English, you want to pick up friend walking in Indian air condition, whatever they see. And uh, Italian Costa Bello, power in Omi Caro, bellissimo, 250 rupees. Gracias. And German cook my dunks in Hundo Bar. This is one free the next boy, Swa Euro. Or we didn't choose good and tag. In Chinese, Zhongguo, Ni Hao. This is Zhongguo Mao. This is Han Hao. This is Zhengde Hongzhou, Haipin Mao. 200 rupees. This is my Hongzhou, Xie Mao, Tai Tian. In Japanese, Kuchu Kuno, Takai, Kuchu Kuno, Kan Ni Haku Rupee, Ranai. Harika to Sayonara, Konnichiwa. Goodbye, Mas. Sayonara. You got Arabic, so, what do you notice about the second video? Good observation, right? And guess what? I wasn't sure. So I kind of like approached him when he finished and I said, Oh, by, by the way, I, I saw a video of a young person uh, that spoke very similar different languages like you do. I mean, uh, do, you, do you know who he is? And they say, yeah, that's me. I'm Ravi from YouTube. I think YouTube should pay him royalty, eh? Ravi from YouTube, right? So, yeah, and you can see that Ravi has grown up. So that was the younger version of him, right? And you see, after many years. But what I was very impressed with Ravi was that he never stopped learning. He put in the effort to continue learning. I mean, he knew a lot of languages when he was young, and I'm glad you picked up Chinese. Why do you think he spoke Chinese? Because the situation changed. And he was agile enough to even learn a new language. He adapted to the current situation. And because there were more Chinese tourists coming in at that time, guess what? You know, there will be more opportunity to present the peacock fan to the people, right? So, do you think I bought a peacock? But by, by the way, how many of you will consider buying a peacock fan from Ravi? Yeah, because of the experience, right? I mean, it was, yeah, it was good, right? So, how many of you, so what do you think I did? Do you think I bought a peacock fan from Ravi? Yeah, yes? How many think yes? How many think no? How many will not put up your hand no matter what I say? <laughs> this is your moment. <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting, right? Uh, so I did not buy a peacock fan from Ravi. And, and you, may be, you may be curious, right? So um, we had a conversation, and Ravi said, Hey, by the way, what brought you to Mumbai? And we said, Well, we just spoke in a Hisha conference, and, but I remember seeing a video of you 
positioning with different languages. And I'm very impressed that you learn uh, Chinese too. Oh, okay, so where are you from? I'm from KL, from Malaysia. Do you travel a lot? Yeah, depending on where the conferences are, we will be there. So, oh, okay, so you travel a lot. Okay, he went away, he went to the bank, he took up some additional fan. And he said, John, because you travel a lot, I'd like to recommend to you this particular peacock fan. And this eye of the peacock will protect you wherever you travel to. <laughs> you will protect me wherever I travel to. So when you hear that, what would you do? So I did not buy one, I bought everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of like, wow, okay, I've got friends. Yeah, I'm sure my friends will love it when I pass it to them and we'll give them good protection. Yeah. So I was really, really intrigued uh, on how he actually, and later I found out that actually, but actually I knew the Peacock fan was actually slightly higher than the market price. It, it was, right? But I was still willing as a customer to pay a little bit more, to pay for the premium, right? It is a commodity because a lot of people will actually push the Peacock fan to you. But then I was still willing to pay for the experience because of his effort to learn. His effort to be different, his effort to have mastery. So my question to you, what are you doing for your own personal journey? Are you continuing to grow? Or are you at the level that, hey, I know everything. I don't need to know. Let the others know and let them do the work. Or are you constantly learning? Even today, Having heard from Steve yesterday, what are some of the things, the insights that you can apply? Let this just not be a conference of good food, although that is important. <laughs> but what is your takeaway? How are you learning? So if you give me permission, I'd just like to share a little bit about my personal journey. You know, when I started my career, I was in the hotel line. I spent 20 years in the hotel business. Um, so prior to doing my speaking, training, and coaching, I was in sales and marketing. I was doing revenue management with hotel brands like Hilton, Marriott, Pan Pacific Hotel Group. So many, many different groups. And I think there are some of the hotelier friends. Say, Who is from the hotels here? Who are from hotels? Yeah, yeah, all right. Come say hi to me if you have not had a chance later on. Huh? So, um, so... After 18 years, I decided to venture into the unknown, into this world of speaking. And I was really curious. I wanted to add value. I wanted to do something more. Uh, but one thing that I've learned is never stop learning. Continue to learn, right? Continue to learn. So over the years, although I was not in the coaching, but I wanted to equip myself, go through the training development so that I'll be equipped. So, um, and... I also was privileged enough to serve as the president of the Global Speakers Federation. So that was the first time an Asian had the privilege to lead a global international association that representing the world of speaking. So as I go through that journey, I continuously learn, and it was in 2015, 2016, that I had to give a five-minute speech in front of thousands of professional speakers. People like Brian Tracy, people like Jack Canfield. These are the heroes that I look up to. And I had to do a five-minute speech. And it was really frightening. Reminded me of the roller coaster ride again. Right? It was frightening. But I told myself, if I don't do it now, when will I do it? So sometimes when opportunity comes, learn, go through it, but more importantly, learn from the experience. So this, these are some of the um, opportunities. And, and this was the crowd, right? So really frightening, right? Because in the States, you know, capital of the U.S., and you had to do a five-minute in front of all of them. And if you look at it, so the only Asian among all my peers of people going through it. 
And over the years, I never stopped. I continued to equip myself even as a speaker. So I got my accreditation as a certified speaking professional in 2013. And because of the global work that I do, I got the Global Speaking Fellow in 2022, right? That gives the expertise on the global front. And that has helped me to be better in whatever they do so that I can give the best value to the people like yourself who are in the audience right now. I even talk through, for some of you who are familiar with ICF. Anyone familiar with ICF? Right, the International Coaching Federation. So I have done more than 25 hours of coaching over the 18 years and got the Master Certified Coach. So to me, it's about an investment on my personal learning. If I expect other people to learn, I want to make sure I learn myself. Then I'm being authentic to serve the community. So my question to you is, what are you doing to serve your people? What are you doing to serve the people that you work with? And over the last 18 years, just privileged to have had a chance to speak in all these different countries. And do you notice one flag there? Woohoo! Thank you for letting me add Nepal. <laughs> Namaste. Thank you so much. Uh, it's my first time uh, speaking here, so I'm now able to add Nepal to the list of the different countries I've had the opportunity to work. So all of you are my friends, if you ever come to Kuala Lumpur, but do let me know, not, hopefully not everyone together at 300. <laughs> I can't stretch myself, but be happy to meet up and catch up with you. Yeah. And, and because of that, I had the privilege to also receive the Brand Laureate Award last year, a recognition for the global world. <laughs> so the reason I'm sharing this is to inspire you to press give a thought to you that it is possible. If you put in the work that nobody sees sometimes, you know, the 2,500 coaching hours, nobody sees, you're just with the client. Everyone is having fun, they're doing different things. But if you put in the hours, your reward will come. As you put in the reward, other people will look at your leadership. If you tell people, do it, but if you don't do, they're probably saying, just talking, eh? Just talking, all right? So I'd like to encourage you to consider that. A group friend of mine, uh, Jack Clear, uh, James Clear, he said this in his book, Atomic Habits, right? If you're familiar with this book, and he says that the changes that you can do, the tiny changes can have remarkable results. If you just spend 1% working on growing, compounded over a year, the changes will be dramatic, right? So sometimes when you look at changes, you're like, oh, I can't do it. This is too big for me. But use that 1% to create a better version of you. So what's the good? Learning new things? Okay, so the key question is, what is your 1% incremental you wish to do on your professional and daily life? All right? Have a quick Three minutes conversation with your partner on your left or right. Have a quick conversation, right? What would you commit to do in your life even after the session today? So talk to your partner right now. Partner, partner, partner. So turn to one person next to you. What is the one thing that you want to master, that you want to do on a daily basis, consistently? All right? How is it going to be? What is the one thing that I like to do? How's the flight? All right, one final minute, one final minute for your discussion with your partner. So what would you do? What is the 1% incremental you would do with your partner? Okay, so keep the conversation going. Keep the conversation going. So are you ready to move on? Yes. Are you ready to move on? Yes. One more time. Yes. All right, fantastic. Can you give a high five to your team members for helping you to learn? All right. 
Whatever is good for you. Okay, wow, some of you are going across the table, right? I like it, I like it. Right, keep the energy up, keep the energy up. Fantastic. So, the third point is this. Remember greed? What was greed? G was for what? Growth mindset. What is R? Resilience. So we're now into influence, which is growth mindset number four. Right? Growth mindset number four. Now, in a recent survey by Gartner, right, a consultancy group, they came up with a new call to human leadership. They came up with things that is required among leaders in organization. And I thought this would be something to share with all of you. And this is what they came up with. They came up with this chart. And leaders are expected to be really authentic, to have empathetic skills, and to be really adaptive, right? The human leadership skills, where you're able to act with purpose, where you're able to show care, respect, and also be adaptive, how flexible you are, right? How flexible you are. So, during the last, during yesterday, right, this is a great platform for you to meet up with people, agree? How many new friends have you met up with? Six. There are 300 people here. You only got six. Oh, oh six multiply. Oh, yeah, yeah, I missed that out. Yeah. So, so again, you know, begin to ask people, what are some areas that people are looking for. But in the Gartner report, this is what they say. And as I look at it, you know, even yesterday, I've been privileged to capture some pictures with some of you. Uh, you may see your picture there, or you may not, if you didn't get a chance. But it's through this conversation that you can learn to be authentic. And empathetic is about listening, isn't it? Right? So, uh, some amazing folks that you see there. Um, I think, are they still in the same table at the corner there? <laughs> or they changed the table, some of them there, right? Yeah, so, so again, it's using the conference as an opportunity to learn about influence. Influence is about you learning about other people. So, how many people have you had a chance to reach out to? Right. Some, some of the people, some of the speakers too, that were here yesterday uh, during our lunchtime, our meeting. So again, well, later on, I'll probably be asking, maybe a lot of you will be wanting to get a selfie. We can do that. <laughs> yeah, we'll put you in the presentation. But just to collect, right? Just to have all of you who are now part of my connection, it really helps, fills my heart, but not enough, right? It is about how can you begin to create that authenticity, the empathy, and also to have the adaptability, right? Because during conferences like this is where you can learn a lot about yourself and the things that is going to be useful. Now, yesterday, now how many of you see your picture here? Wow, I didn't know I took that many pictures, huh? All right, thank you for being part of it, right? Thank you for allowing me to share uh, your pictures up here too. Yeah, so sometimes you don't get a chance to be on the stage, but hey, all of you are part of the stage right now with me. Yeah, so I'm honored. Now, the thing is, I'd like to share with you what is very important if you want to have that element of human leadership is to learn from feedback. Uh, I think Steve spoke a lot about feedback too, uh, how important it is and what you can do with it. So here are some coaching questions that I'd like to share with you that is going to help you. Right, so back in your team, if you want to learn to be better at influence, ask these three questions. What should I start to do more of if I want to influence better? What should I stop doing or do less of? What should I continue doing that is working well? Three simple questions. If you do it on a daily basis, on the area that you want to work on, I guarantee you, you'll be really successful. Maybe you like to be more assertive. 
What do I need to start doing to become more assertive? I want to become more empathetic. What can I do? What should I do less of? Three simple questions to really reimagine your leadership possibility. How many of you are excited with these questions? Yeah. Do you think it's something that you can do? Do you think this is something you can do at your homes too? How many of you are courageous enough to ask your partner tonight these three questions? As your husband, as your wife, what do I need to do more of? What do I need to do less of? That's the scary part, right? What should I start continue to do? And even with your children, trust me, if you start using this question, your relationship with your children, how many of you have children here? Yeah. Take it to the next level. Trust me, people always talk about the next generation, right? It's so hard to communicate with them. But what are you doing? You're asking for their feedback. As your manager, what should I start doing or do more of? What would you, what would you like me as your manager to do less of? Can you imagine what they will say and what will come back to you? But of course, when you do number two, be open-minded. Right? So because some of the things they may come back to you may be a little bit challenging, but as long as you're open to it, you are in a good position. So what's so good? Learning? Okay, fantastic. So let's keep going, right? And the fourth one that I want to share with you is trust. Now, all the things that I've spoken about up to this point is great. But how many of you think trust is really important? It all begins with trust, right? It all begins with trust. So, that ties in with growth mindset number five. Are you inspired by the success of others? Or are you envious? Because when trust is there, you are looking into the world of abundance, plentiful. So, I'd like you to think about this question right now, right? So, we talk about trust. So, I'd like you to write down in a piece of paper, if you have there, what are the qualities of the people that you trust? that you have very high trust. Maybe if 1 to 10, you have a high trust of 8, 9, and 10. Think of what are the qualities of these people that you have. All right, so I'm going to give you a minute to reflect. I'd like you to jot down for yourself what are some of the qualities of these people, right? In your own environment, the people that you work with, what are the qualities of the people that you have high trust with? Okay, you got another minute, you got another minute. <clears throat> all right, all done? Okay, so can I hear out what are some of the things you have written down? Elements of uh, high trust. Listen what? Sorry? Listen and then keep it yourself. Listen and keep it to yourself. Okay, so confidentiality, okay, great. Listen and keep it to yourself, what else? Integrity. Integrity. Ethical practice. Okay, ethical practice. Dependable. Transfer. Or transparent. Transparency, yeah? Respect. Okay, great. Empathy. Honesty. Knowledge. Non judgmental knowledge. Great, okay. Hard working. Is that important? Wow, how many hours do you work, my brother? A lot of hours you work, hardworking? Hardworking. Are you hardworking? Eh? Yes, okay, good. Hardworking man. Talk to him. Eh? Okay, good. Okay, what else? What else, my friends? Anything? Collaborative. Collaborative. Sincere. Sincere. Okay, very good. Okay, anything else? Expressive. Expressive. So when a person is expressive, you trust them a lot. Remember, we're talking about trust, huh? Oh, they express a lot. You know what? Oh, I trust you, brother, sister. Expressive? It could be, it could be, yeah. Okay, good, yeah, expressive. Anything else from here? Qualities of high trust. Anything came out? Anything, yes? Oh, love. Oh, saranye. Ah, love, saranye. Okay. Feedback. Honest, honest feedback, right? Okay, honest feedback. Anything else? They depend upon. Lead by example. Fantastic. Yeah. So give yourself a big hand. Yeah, give yourself a big hand. Yeah. 
Yeah. Ab- absolutely, absolutely. Things that you have said are absolutely some of the key elements that is going to be useful. And I'd like to share with you four C's. So in addition to that, if you do this four C religiously every day, it's going to help you further. The first one is this. The first C is called competence, right? Competence. So competence is your ability and your willingness. So competence is about your knowledge, skills, and attitude. You can have the best skills, the best knowledge, but if your attitude is not there, it's going to be challenging. Agree? So be really good at whatever you're doing. Be really good. Second one is this thing that is called commitment. It is called what? Commitment. What is commitment? Sorry? So make sure you show up, right? Have you heard of the word NATO? N-A-T-O. What is NATO? Uh, this is not the North American Treaty Organization. <laughs> Steve is kind of like giving me the green NATO. Okay, uh, this is maybe the Malaysian or Asian version. No action, talk only. <laughs> different NATO, different NATO, right? Yeah, because sometimes, have you seen leaders? All they do is talk, but no action. They don't do anything. Give me some feedback. After that, what happened to the feedback? No, sure, not, no one knows, right? So, commitment. If you say something, do it. Do you think it's important to say something or do something? Yeah, because people will always listen to what you say and what you do after that. That's where you become really authentic as a leader. The third one is make sure that you are consistent in doing it, right? Have the consistency. Don't show up on Monday, don't show up on Wednesday, but show up throughout the time at home and at work. So what's the good? What was the first C? Competence. Second C? Third one? It's right there. You shouldn't have missed that, right? The fourth one is called caring. So thank you, my friend. Yeah, he said care, right? So as a leader, if you look at these four elements, what are you getting at, right? What can you do to gain these four elements? The practices. Besides all those valuable qualities that you spoke about, how can you begin to do more of this? Begin to build up yourself, your competence, your commitment, your consistency, and your ability to care for another human being, your team members, your colleagues. No, recently I've been privileged to work with this organization that is called BP2W, an even better place to work. And, and what they do is really to help organizations improve fulfillment, help them to drive leadership, and more importantly, to get a pulse of what is happening in organization. So I'm, I'm pretty excited in, in working with them because it gives a sense to organization because sometimes you want to get a feel of what is having a ground level. So this is what we call the mood at work. And because of our partnership with Growth Sellers uh, for inviting me here, uh, what we're going to do is um, to give you an opportunity. If you and your organization like to, we can do a complimentary assessment. I thought I had 10 minutes, suddenly it's become zero. Yeah, okay, thanks. The nine minutes came back. Okay, good. Yeah, give me a scare. All right, so uh, if you like to, just complete a form, and then we will work with you to help you gain a good assessment. Get a pulse of your organization. Uh, later, I will do a deck also, if you didn't manage to capture it, but if you can capture it, just take a picture, uh, submit it, let us know of your interest, if your organization want to get a pulse to build better trust, right? To look at the areas that is identified there. Uh, I'd be happy to talk a little bit more with you, Okay. So, the fifth one, right? Inspired by other people's success. So, one takeaway for you is, what are five things that your colleagues do that you're most proud of? If I were to ask you right now, if there are five things that your colleagues do that you're more proud of, do you know? Are, are things that your colleagues do, are there things that you're proud of? Because some of you are giving me, huh? Proud of? No. 
not proud of. I'm sure they are proud of. But this is something that I've also learned as an Asian. When challenges are there, we are very quick to say. We are very quick to point out. But when people do good things, we are very slow to share those feedback. Agree? Imagine, even for yourself, would you like to know how well you're doing? And I'll give you one extra tip. Don't only tell them, hey, you're doing a fantastic job. Is that good? Sorry? Half full. So how can you make it full? Yeah, share with them the behavior. That's often the missing piece. Because you say, hey, you're well done. Keep it up. Fantastic. You're doing a great job. You know, they'll be so happy. They can't sleep at night. You know why they can't sleep? Because they're like wondering, how can I repeat that tomorrow? <laughs> right? So again, when you want to share positive reinforcement, share the things that are doing really well, the behaviors that you observe and you see. All right? So far so good? Having good fun learning? All right, turn to your partner and say, are you having fun learning? Yeah. Turn to them, turn to them and say, are you having fun learning? Okay, fantastic. <clears throat> So, so with that, remember, at the beginning of the session, I requested, I invited you to give a rating for yourself. Now, having gone through the growth mindset, the five pillars, where would you like your score to be in six months, in 12 months? Where do you see it happening? Where would you like it to be? So I'd like you to take couple of seconds to think about it, maybe a minute, or maybe during lunch, during the breaks later on. Where would you rate yourself? Six to 12 months. Remember we started the day with the WUKA war? What is WUKA? Volatile, uncertain, complexity, and ambiguity. So as all of us are here during the Hisham Meet, paving the road map, during testing times, I would like to share with you a new VOCA. Right? So how can you have a VOCA that is filled with vision, that is filled with understanding, clarity, and agility? You have gone through that road before, but as you move to the new road, how can you embrace the greed that is so important, the vision, the understanding, the clarity, and the agility, right? As you begin to think of grit, how will that make a difference? So remember, we started with the expedition Everest. I will call it your grit expedition. You know, I didn't really tell you how I ended, remember? They took a picture of me, and said, here's your picture. And guess what? After that first time, I went up a few more times. What was frightening to me in the beginning became a thrill for me. It became a little bit better. Each time I did it, it became better. And I was just enjoying the whole journey, the whole process. So sometimes as you go through a crisis, remember, a challenge, but there's also a lot of opportunity. So what will it be for you today? Because after that, I was beginning to be filled with a different emotion, and emotions of excitement, courage, growth mindset, commitment, right? The different emotions. So what would be yours? So again, as we're all here today, gathered, how can you leverage your time as we celebrate together later on this evening? Make use of the time. Like what my dear friend says, Six person, multiply by six, multiply by six, right? Make sure you capture as many people. And one of the things that I love to do a lot is taking selfie because it's the memories that keep us together. And Facebook has a very nice way of doing that. Hey, you were here six months ago. You were here one year ago. And that's the continuity. And you're not alone on the journey, agree? You're here together as a community. Let's give a big hand to Mohan and uh, Samjana for... You know, just bringing everyone to learn, to be inspired, to get the energy, because you deserve it, right? So, with that, I'd like you to uh, stay connected with me on LinkedIn. If you're not connected yet, some of you have reached out to me. And my friends, 
What is greed? G is for? Growth mindset. What is R? Resilience. What is I? Influence. And what is T? Okay, great. So can I just invite you to just stand up right now, right? Wherever you are, stand up. And I'd like to invite you to, if it is appropriate, to hold hands with the person next to you. Hold hands with the person next to you. Okay, just hold hands if it is appropriate, if you don't mind. Just hold the hands, right? And I'd like you to say this together. We're going to say the words, together we can. Yeah. Right? So we say, together we can, we're going to put our hands out. Okay, one, two, three. Wow, you are very quick. Okay, let's do it one more time. One, two, three. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. I believe you. All the best to you for the rest of the day. Thank you so much, my friends. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for that amazing energy that you've brought in here. Uh, I request you to please take the center stage again. Stage is your home, Jonathan, and we would like to thank you on behalf of Growth Sellers. Kindly invite Ms. Samjana Ma'am and uh, Mr. Mohan sir to be on stage to give away the token of appreciation. That was amazing. You did a great job. Don't we think the same? A big round of applause again, everybody. Thank you again on behalf of Growth Seller, HR Meet 2024 uh, for being here, Mr. Jonathan Lau. We really appreciate your presence.